a lot of life is like that. You cannot predict necessarily. You can do what you think is best for you, but I mean, if you really are doing what you think is best, not trying to justify it, but doing what you really do think is best. But it's just very hard to love a life you didn't choose. It's hard to love a class you didn't choose. It's hard to love a partner you didn't choose. This is why people get you know, locked into a relationship because of necessity, because of you know, pregnancy, because of need, because of pressure, our family's expected or whatever. And then we end up miserable because it's not a life that we chose. We don't think of it as a life that we chose. But you can't know. But what you can know is that it's the life that you chose. It's the decision that you made. And that's where freedom is. Being able to take the choices that you made, embrace them, say, this is the life I've chosen. And to love the life that you've chosen. You should, I, mean, I don't know, what's the alternative? And there's another one, though. If you wait to the last minute on things, um, especially, I mean, obviously I'll be biased towards, like, you know, this assignment here with the journalist, but just generally, if you wait to the last minute on things, you're not going to do what you could have done. In other words, you could have been, you could have done so much more. And I don't just mean like, oh, you could have written so much more. What I mean is that you could have gotten so much more out of it. Like this guy here, you know, he's a well-known author. He writes books. A lot, millions of people write, uh, read his books. There's a reason that millions of people read his books. And it might not just be because he's good. It might be because he's good, but there are millions of people around the world who find tremendous value over generations, have found tremendous value in what he has to say. So maybe it's worthwhile to find out what he has to say. Doesn't mean you're going to agree with it. Maybe you're gonna to get to the end of it all and just say, that was a waste. When I was an undergraduate, there were three books that I carried with me at, at all times. One of them is a book called The, the Contos by Ezra Pound. I might have it over there. And I remember one time I was sitting in the hallway reading this book, and it was, it's incredibly difficult. It's, it's a book of, of, of poetry. And I mean, it's, how do I even explain it? It's like, it's, it's a big giant book like this. The guy writes in 17 different languages. And for whatever reason, I got hooked on this idea that I need to figure out what this guy has to say, because he spent a lifetime writing this. And he was a very famous poet that, even not even so much for his poetry, but people would send him their, their poems, and he could take what you wrote, give you, you, know, give you uh, points for improvement, and, and people won Nobel Prizes based off of the suggestions he made for their improvements. So I just thought, this is a guy who I need to, to know more about, at least understand where he's coming from. And I remember one day sitting in the hallway at, 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 uh, I was in the university, and I was reading this thing, and my, I was waiting for my professor. He came out of his, out of his office, and he sees me, and he goes, what are you reading? So I, I held it up to him, and he goes, my God, why are you reading that? And I said, I need to know what he's talking about. I need to understand. And he shakes his hand and he just says, oh, Stephen, there's nothing there. There's nothing to understand. And he walked away. And I was just like, shut up. I will understand. And it took me a long time. I had to go find people who, 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 who could read Sanskrit to ask them, what does this say? So I could understand it better. Got to the end of the book and closed the book. Big smile on my face. And guess what? There's nothing there. <laughs> There is nothing there. But I learned something I couldn't have learned any other way, which is to investigate and find out. Sometimes you will follow a rabbit trail, and at the end of it all, you'll find out that there's nothing there. Sometimes you'll follow the rabbit trail, and you're gonna find out that there was way more there than you possibly could have understood at the beginning. And it can change your life in dramatic ways that you never could have even imagined. In fact, it could have changed your ways in ways that you're not even conscious of. Like I look back on that, did I get something out of it? I'm sure I did, somewhere along the way. I mean, you can't put that much effort and work into something and really get nothing out of it. There has to be something there. But maybe it wasn't what I was hoping for, but you know, a lot of times in life, you don't get the things that you want. You, you end up with the things that you need. And so along the way, you can pick up these things. If you're waiting until like August 24th to just pound these things out, and then I, I hear this sometimes from people who like proudly proclaimed, oh, I just bullshitted my way through it. Why on earth would you be proud of being a bullshit artist? You're bragging about being a fake person. Oh, I just put ideas out there that weren't true. <laughs> a five-year-old can do that. You just did it in writing form. And you had, and what's worse though, is that you had the opportunity to engage with some of the best ideas and some of the smartest people who have ever lived. 
and yet you chose to do fill in the blank and later on maybe you can tell me what you were doing instead during that time. And if that really was something that built you up in a way that engaging ideas could have done. And it isn't me telling you, I don't have to tell you. I don't, I don't know what's best for you. I don't, I don't know what's best for you. I don't even know if we necessarily know what's best for us. Like I said, sometimes we don't get the things that we want, we get the things that we need. And very rarely are the things that we need the things that we pursue right off the bat. The things that we need are the things that we find along the way. You know, and what's, what's tragic about it a lot of times is you completely miss things because you're not even paying attention. You don't even realize that a class is talking about you. That's how oblivious you can be to the world around you. you know, and if that's not a great example of it, I don't know what else I could possibly tell you that would convince you of that. And so when you're paying attention to the world and you're, you're going to pick things up, certainly at the very least, you're not going to miss things. And at that point, you can be a real human being because you can actually decide what goes in and what affects you and, and what you can use in your real life. But sometimes there's, there's going to be things in your life that can get right past you and you'll never even notice it went past you. And then you're going to be that person who comes out of school and says, school is bullshit. I just bullshitted my way through. When people say that, I absolutely believe you. I absolutely believe that you probably did do that. And I absolutely would never go to a doctor who told me oh, I bullshitted my way through medical school. <laughs> I would never go to a lawyer who said I bullshitted my way through, through law school. And I think that a person who comes to you for advice, or if you go to a person for advice who just got done telling you they bullshitted their way through some of the best ideas that you possibly could have ever engaged. I think that you're crazy to take life advice from a person like that. I think people would be crazy to take life advice from you. And maybe that's part of the tragedy. Maybe at some point you're gonna realize that you're a fraud because you don't have the ideas that people think that you have. You don't have the wisdom that people think that you have. And maybe by the way, you do have more wisdom than you realize. I don't know. I mean, that happens a lot too. And, that, and that, by the way, that's probably a pretty good sign that when you're willing to admit it, when you're, when you're trying to hide it and pretend like you have the wisdom, even though you know you didn't do the work to gain the wisdom, that's probably when you don't really have it. When you're up, up front and say, I, I have no wisdom, dude, I have no idea what I'm talking about, you probably do at that point. You know, there's a strange paradox that's there. I mean when you're saying it honestly and genuinely, not because you're trying to, to get people to tell you that, that, that they think highly of you. So freedom is the absence of commitments? No. no. No, I mean, you all have the, the freedom in here to choose to, to, to learn something. And the opportunities are there, but you also have that same opportunity in math. You have that same opportunity in, I'm sorry, I don't know what else you take, government, <laughs> economics. And sometimes you're limited what you can learn because of the, the people who you're learning from and the environment. And, you know, the, and then sometimes you come across people who have a lot to teach you. But... The question is going to be, are you at the point where you're ready to take in what you could learn? In other words, are you open to it? Are you ready for it? Are you prepared for it? You know, you'll find in life a lot of times you're going to get certain blessings that you might not just be ready for at that moment. And then you look back on it in life and go, man, if only I knew then what I know now. And I'm sure you all know older people who say things like that. I just wish I knew then what I knew now. You have an opportunity to know now. But it takes work. It takes effort to sit back and think and to, 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 to analyze and to, to put yourself, I'll just say it, I guess, to put yourself above your current station, to put yourself above what you presently are, to sacrifice what you presently are in hopes of becoming something that you possibly could be. And what could you be? I don't know. But whatever it is you could be, I promise you it's more than what you presently are. And by the way, you also could be less than what you presently are if, you, if we make decisions that lead us down a really ugly path in life. So freedom isn't the absence of commitments. It's the ability to choose your commitments and to choose what's best for you. And sometimes the best that you can do is to, is to choose what you think is best. It might not be the best thing for you, but you can think it is and you can choose it. And sometimes you're gonna make a decision in life and you're going to look back on, I'm sure some of you have already done this, maybe even multiple times. You can look back on a decision and go, what the hell was I thinking? Why did I do that? Oh my God, I'm so stupid. 
you know? But there's, there's a beauty of it though. You're able to, to embrace it though. And to be able to say, but you know what? It was a decision I made. And who knows, by the way, you don't know if what you chose was, was the best option. You don't know. That's, the, that's, that's one of the, the comedies of life. I don't know if it's a tragedy, but certainly a comedy. Like you're asking, like, I don't know, like, um, should I have gone to the, the movies or should I have gone or should I have stayed home? And then maybe you're like watching um, on TikTok and you see your friends at the movies and I go, man, I should have gone. They're having so much fun. And you're kicking yourself because you made a bad decision. Was it a bad decision? I don't know. Neither do you, by the way. Because maybe because you're, you go with your friends, maybe they pick you up. And because they pick you up, they're delayed by 10 minutes by driving. And maybe when, but that delay of 10 minutes is the thing that causes you guys all to be in a car accident and you're all killed on the way to the movie theater. Maybe, maybe. That was, that was a long time ago now, probably 10 years ago now. I had some students, they were in the, the, uh, the nursing thing here. You know, the, whatever it's called, the academy, nursing academy. And they were walking down the street on Highland. And you know like where Highland and, and 7-Eleven meet an intersection right there? So, uh, long story short, I'll uh, tell you. Um, long story short, think of like 7-Eleven being here, Arco being here. And <clears throat> they were walking up the street this way. In short, they happened upon uh, an accident. There was a motorcyclist going that way. And then there was a car coming this way. The car turned, boom, right in front of the motorcyclist. The motorcyclist hit the car, was thrown off of the, uh, thrown off of the, um, the, his motorcycle hit the pavement. They ran over and they were doing the best they could CPR to keep this person alive. And there were a lot of people on scene. So of course, what were they doing? Filming, recording with their phones. Oh wow, someone's dying. They had to yell at people multiple times to call 911. They finally, someone finally did. They finally showed up. Um, and I'm on the school news and everything like that, heroes. Um, the guy died um, on, on route to the, to the hospital. The guy didn't make it, the motorcyclist. Um, oh, 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 something else. That guy being alive or dead today is the difference between this person putting on his jacket, walking over to his table, you know, or grabbing his, his water bottle he's taking with him, and then walking out the door, dead. Make sense? Or the person is going to leave, oh, damn it, water bottle's over there, and he leaves. Delayed by three seconds, two seconds, he's alive. Because instead of being right there, he's back here when that car turns. Something so stupid and small like that. You know? And he may have been angry when he goes to pick up his water bottle because it's not where it's supposed to be. Dude, who moved my water bottle? And he's mad about it. And so he's driving and he's going and he has no idea that that car that's turning would have killed him if he found his water bottle two seconds earlier, three seconds earlier. A lot of life is like that. You cannot predict necessarily. You can do what you think is best for you. But I mean, if you really are doing what you think is best, not trying to justify it, but doing what you really do think is best. But you can't know. But what you can know is that it's the life that you chose. It's the decision that you made. And that's where freedom is. Being able to take the choices that you made, embrace them, and say, this is the life I've chosen. And to love the life that you've chosen. Because you, I mean, I don't know, what's the alternative? Questions? Comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques? A lot of us choose to live this way. In other words, to have those decisions made for us. Um, you guys know what the word infantilization means? Anyway, it's like to, be, like to treat people like their, like their children, treat people like their kids. You're, I'm gonna, you, make, you make decisions for people. And there are some people who are very happy to have other people make the decisions for them. It's very hard to love a life that you haven't chosen. In other words, if you don't get to make any decisions in anything, you don't feel like you own it. Why do, like for example, one of the reasons that, 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 that people hate school so much, it's like, think about, think about how, how nonsensical that is. We hate school. It's like, oh, I hate school. Why? Because, fill in the blank. Why is it, because why? Does anybody in here just, just freaking hate learning? 
oh, they want us to be, you know, we want to be a better person. Did any of you guys walk around and insult people for being smart? <laughs> You're smart. Did anybody do that? What do we insult people for? Instead, being stupid. Ah, oh, you're stupid. You're stupid. You know. We, we, so, think about this. And what's the point of school? It's to make you smart. And so we, the the one place that we have committed in our lives that we're going to go, so that so that we can become the thing that we all say we want to be, which is smart. You have a. You guys have have buildings and professionals. Well, I'll use the term loosely, dedicated to making you the thing that we say we want to be, which is smart and educated, and yet we do a whole lot to avoid becoming smart and educated. Why? Probably because we hate the fact that we have to be there. I don't know. I just think sometimes, like, you guys have to be uncomfortable, a lot of you. The desks are facing this way, and I'm standing over here. So if you want to, to face me, you have to sit in your chair like this, turned around. That's got to be uncomfortable. I mean, I mean, if it was me, I would probably turn my desk so I could face forward. And some of you will sit there and go, we can do that? Think about that. We're so programmed that we don't even realize that we can turn a desk without getting yelled at. Maybe that's the problem with school. That we have it in our heads, and, 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 I'm, not, and I'm not saying it's, it's unfounded, but we have it in our heads that there's so many strict and unbendable rules that that's the thing that bothers us because we don't get to make decisions and commitments on our own. If if there were people, if, if there were people, if, if you weren't allowed to come here unless you scored over a certain level or if you, unless you had certain grades, I bet there would be like an underground market of people smuggling themselves into school. In fact, you think about it right now. Some of you are sitting there going like, "Is this guy still talking? This sucks. I hate this class. All we do is write and listen. Because that's what the class is supposed to be." And yet some of you are stressing, or some of you who are having that thought right now are stressing because you want to pay a university twenty or thirty thousand dollars a year to get what you're getting right now exactly for free. It's like, oh, I want to get out of here so I can so I can get a hundred thousand dollars in debt to get the exact same thing someplace else. But it's different. You can get a degree over there. Okay, so you want to pay a hundred thousand dollars for a piece of paper? I've got a bunch of them over there. I'll sell them to you guys for a dollar each. They come at, I just printed a whole bunch of them out of my, out of my printer. It's different. So what you're going for is, is so, but, sorry, so that's the point though. You're making the choice. You're making the decision. You can do this for free, but I'm forcing you to. No. You can do this, for, you can do this and pay me $30,000. Okay. Because we recognize intuitively that we wanted, that the things in life that, that, are, that, that are meaningful and matter to us are the things that we choose. 